Recording. Look at the size of this thing. This means that you get to see what's going on in here. This means you get to see what's going on in the world. And then this is for my actual job. The ergonomics of this rig are crazy. Crazy good, right? Like that Little Caesar's crazy bread. Marinara dip. Oh yeah. Honestly though, Tim's rig is just as large and he has no uh, rig for holding his marinara dip. Bye Tim. Hi there and welcome to today's wedding day. I am Taylor Jackson and uh, go mirrorless they said. Get smaller camera they said. Let's go take some wedding pictures with the all new Nikon Z8. Now I think the drone goes away, yeah. Yeah, just like that, wow. What a shot, huh? We've never done anything that elaborate. You're still going. And also, if you're interested in seeing my shot list for wedding day, you have access to that, as well as my email templates and some presets. Go get those if you want. Oh, I should put the 8512 on. Right here today, at a wedding day, and I'm using the Nikon Z8, which is an incredible camera. It is a Z9, made smaller, less expensive, and very reminiscent in size of the Nikon D850, which we liked a lot. I have with me three lenses. I have the 35 1.8, which I love, the 24 to 70, 2.8, which I also love, and the 85.12, which I've never used at a wedding yet. We have used it for the review video of this camera though, and I'm excited to use it in, in a real life environment. So my goal today is to show you a little bit of the autofocus from within the camera in a real life wedding day, as well as show you how I use a Nikon camera like this during a wedding day. There's a few things that I do that might be a little bit different and some just general usability things that will make your life a lot better with this camera. So the Nikon color palette is warm and lovely and beautiful. And the way to accentuate that is by shooting on shade white balance when it's appropriate. So I am either on cloudy or I'm on shade mode. Inside like this, I'll probably be on cloudy. Shade is a little bit too kind of orangey sometimes for me. So as you can see, beautiful skin tones on the preview. Also the preview coming in a little bit hot. I'm in aperture priority mode. I typically shoot in manual. So I kind of tried aperture priority and I switched back to manual pretty much immediately. We'll also be talking all about my autofocus modes as well as why I shoot in single and not a higher frame rate uh, throughout the rest of the video. So it's gonna be some challenging afternoon light up here. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of the family photos, I think around like 2 p.m which is a bit unfortunate because it's uh, there's not a single cloud in the sky right now. But around sunset, there's a lot of great options. Around daytime, I got this tree and then it's just bad light. My prediction for the day, I will use the 35 for getting ready. I will use the 24 to 70 for the ceremony. I will use the 85 for couples portraits until we get into the crazy part with the, the people up on the chairs, in which case maybe 35, maybe 24 to 70. Also, I just realized that because there's no blackout, you can't actually see when I'm taking images. So the number in the bottom right hand corner there that's going 20 to 21, that's showing you when I'm taking images. On my actual screen, I see some hash marks that kind of go up on the edges that signify that I'm actually taking an image. You can also turn the audio on and it makes an MP3 of a shutter noise, which is fine, I guess, but I don't use that. And there is no mechanical shutter in this camera. Oh my gosh, it's Timothy Musa. Where are we going, Tim? Tim is setting up a light stand. Wow, this is thrilling footage. Oh, it's gonna go over here? Yeah. Wow. This is Peaches, and we have another one over there for the Wow. Horror. And I did a modification to the Stella Pro. StellaProMods.com. So this is the venue. Fortunately, very nice ceilings here, so you can bounce light. But also, Tim is going to be using the Stella Pro up in the corner there and uh, he's gonna light the speeches, so I don't really have to do a whole lot today. No speed lights for Taylor. And 
All the presets you're seeing are available to any member on the member's website. So if you're a member over there and you got access to book more weddings and the hybrid photo video wedding photography course and off camera flash wedding photographers and all the other courses that I built over there, you have access to these presets. And in the initial Nikon Z8 video, I mentioned that there were three spots available for monthly memberships rather than the annual. The annual is usually the one that's available. There were some monthly memberships available. They are all sold out again. So if you do see one that's available, get in on it quick. Otherwise, only the annual will be available. Also, quick shout out to the 85, 1, 2, and this Z8 because it's an incredible combination, even if your framing is a little bit off, but I'll pick a better one to deliver in the gallery. So when looking for a location for family photos, obviously this is bad. I'll take my glasses off to show you more. So obviously this is bad light. I don't want to be taking photos this way. But as I rotate a little bit more this way, all of a sudden the light looks okay. A little squinty, but quality of light, I would say overall is pretty good. Um, also, we're standing on cement, which usually if people are wearing heels, they appreciate, rather than putting them in the sketchy grass. So I may start here. If too many people have white hair or bald heads, uh, that is unfortunately a downside of shooting in the sun, that their, their heads will kind of turn to just white. So if that is the case, I will bring us onto the grass. But if not, if everyone has darker hair, Everybody's coming out right here. Uh, the key for shooting in this type of lighting is that you wanna be shooting with a background that's also in the shade. So a background like this works a lot better than if I was shooting kinda, of, I don't know, where's the background like that? So picture my face in the shade, shooting with a background like this. The background just kind of explodes, it's, it's too hot. Whereas this holds the image together a little bit better. So that's the plan, that's the new plan. Another location that could potentially work is maybe this side of the barn. I like to know if my couples, if they like the red. If they don't like the red, I just avoid it all day and I use the more neutral tones. But if they do like the red, we could do the photos right here. And uh, basically you're looking for, if my shadow's here, that's probably the direction that I'm gonna want everybody facing. So everyone will stand here, nice background, frame out the red, maybe bring in the red if they're interested. And that's how you make good light in a bad light environment where there is not a single cloud in the sky and it's just, just hot, hot light. So a few new things that I've discovered with this camera. One, I shoot double the amount of images that I would usually shoot on any other mirrorless camera. And that is up from double what I used to shoot from DSLR. So I shot a lot of images today. I'm guessing because there's no physical feedback when I'm hitting the shutter, it's maybe something that I have to learn to get a little bit better at. Also, battery life wise, I went through three batteries today, which obviously I did shoot more images. I shot about 5,700 images total and I went through three batteries pretty much entirely, which is, uh, I would say, up from one and a half or maybe even one battery that I would shoot on most other systems. This said, I was also running an HDMI out to my screen recorder and I don't know, just taking more images than usual. So maybe it's not uh, an accurate comparison to what I would normally use on a wedding day. I do have one other Nikon camera with me, the Nikon FM 3A. And you're not gonna see any photos from it today because this is a Sunday wedding and I'm releasing this video on Wednesday. So there's no time to develop the film, sadly. There's the camera dangling. There's a video up in the top if you wanna learn more about this camera specifically. It's a nice boy. And in the Nikon FM3A today, I got some, uh, some Kodak Gold 200 and you can tell it's the Walmart brand uh, Kodak Gold because it's 24 exposure and not 36, which is a bad financial decision. Here we have Timothy Musa filming The Matrix. It doesn't even show up on the screen. Really? Wow. There it is in real life. So this camera came out yesterday. It's Sony ZV-1 Mark II. And uh, I think I'm going to record the rest of this video on this, maybe. We'll see. Here we go. The all new Sony ZV-1 Mark II. M2. What do you think, Tim?
now that it's a ceremony, I switch up two things. My autofocus mode, I go from basically all points into something that's a little bit more controlled. So if you go into autofocus continuous and you go all the way over to a thing called, I guess, W hyphen C1 or C2, you can actually set the box size that you want and you can put that just over the people that you want it to focus on. Next, as you can see in the top right hand corner there, I'm in DX mode, which is crop mode. And I have my front button, I don't know if it's function one or function two, I have one of those set to go from full frame mode into DX mode. So when I'm using a 24 to 70, I'm able to zoom all the way into 70 and then go into DX mode and get 1.5 times the zoom on top of that. Essentially, I'm just cropping the image in my camera, but the closer I can get it to correct in camera, the better. It's gonna save me time in post-production. And even if you are using AI tools, you're gonna to be closer to the final image. So it's gonna have a better understanding of what exactly you're going for. I did notice the camera had a tendency to focus always on the left individual in the box. I don't know if that's a setting that I can configure, but it wasn't a problem because I was shooting everything here at 2.8, but it was something that was pretty consistent and seemed a little bit strange. The, the guy is a little bit closer and so it should be focused on them. I don't know, I'm not a computer. So for the full veil, this shot, uh, I felt that the focus was close enough at 2.8, I was wide enough, it was fine. For a lot of these shots, I'm actually touching to focus uh, because the camera doesn't really understand, I don't know, you can't really see bride within, within veil. So took some manual intervention there. The rest of the day though, I don't think I did that one single time. I actually changed to 3D autofocus, uh, which is one of my favorite modes of autofocus, but it still didn't really help as much as I wanted it to. All of these images, uh, as I mentioned, they are processed with my presets that are available on the members website, but I've also added some skin smoothing as well. I do automated skin softening, uh, simply because it's such a high megapixel file that if anyone ever zooms in on their face, they're just gonna see way too much. So I think that if you are shooting a higher megapixel camera, it's definitely something you should do to kind of take just a little bit of the edge off. Look at that, the AI autofocus working through the veil. So nice. That was the last shot, this is a different shot now. And at this point, I realized that my IBIS was actually set to sport mode, not normal. Problem solved, and now I'm gonna to switch to higher frame rate. So I'm gonna go, you can go way too many frames per second for a wedding day. I'm gonna settle on 15 here, and it is simply for this moment right here, and the first kiss. There we go. Also, I had a very, very slow card in my SD slot because I didn't intend to be shooting high frame rates. But even though it says that it's capped at R000, which means no frames remaining technically in the buffer, it was still taking lots and lots of photos. So I don't know if this thing is a lie or not, but I definitely got about 100 frames of them coming down the aisle because I was still on 15 frames per second. And again, no physical feedback to tell you that. So I took, again, way too many images.
All right, now I'm gonna sing you a song about the, the Nikon Z8. I'm not gonna do that. So as we enter low light and kind of the awkward time period of the day where there are a lot of incandescent lights and sunlight coming through windows still and band lights, there's a lot going on. And the camera handled it incredibly well. I know one of the criticisms that I see often, uh, specifically with the Z6 II or the original Z6 or Z7 II, is that low light autofocus performance definitely chugs a little bit. And I will assure you with this footage that you're going to see over the next couple of seconds that that is no longer a problem. Even when things get a little crazy, the song really took a turn for where I didn't want it to go. We're going to pick another one. The song also doesn't match the visuals, but neither does life. Put that on a t-shirt and let it rot in a convenience store in Key West, Florida. So as you can see, even with just all points enabled, it's still doing a pretty good job. I will switch uh, now that there are more people in the frame and throw that C1 box around Charlie. Another issue that a lot of the other Nikon mirrorless cameras suffered with was that it would focus on, so if you had it on all points, it would focus on whatever the closest subject was. So even if it wasn't a face, it would still have a tendency to pick up that subject on the edge of the frame. And I did not notice that whatsoever with this camera, so it would be safe to say that that problem is solved. Here's a lot of, this is not a useful autofocus test. There's just 45 people in a tiny little area. Uh, but this is kind of showing you real time what it looks like and uh, how it reacts in a party situation. Here we go, popping back into DX mode to get that little extra crop, get those uh, fire extinguishers out of the frame rather than photoshopping them out. This is my favorite photo, or you're going to see it in, in three photos time. So one photo, two photo, three photo. That's some darn good light on that bread. It's the best bread light I've seen. If you've had better light on bread, send me a DM. <laughs> I'd love to, love to hear about it. So sunset session. If you uh, get the, the shot list in the description and the uh, description for the sunset session is uh, bullet point, do one because you should always in the first meeting, make sure your couples know that this is going to be part of the day. Five, 10 minutes doesn't have to be long. Doesn't even have to be, we're fortunate that we have good grounds here, but I've done sessions in parking lots and in places that are not uh, quote unquote pretty. And with some good light, you can make things look pretty darn good, especially with a lens like the 85 one two. Um, if I had nothing to work with here, also these greens are looking a little, a little too much. I might have to dial this back for the actual uh, delivery. And if I had nothing to work with here and we were just in a parking lot with a bunch of cars, a lot of my photos would be very, very close to them. And I would be doing a lot of posing and I'd be kind of a little bit more in their space because we had space today to walk around. I let them just kind of roam. Uh, most of my couples, these two incredibly comfortable in front of the camera, but most of my couples are a little less than comfortable at best in front of my camera. And the more space that I can give them, I feel like the more that they just can kind of be themselves. It's so back in the venue, the lighting's getting awkward and it's changing every couple of seconds now. So this is kind of that weird blue hour-ish time. And I have a trick for you if you're a Nikon shooter. So you go into your, your white balances, you go all the way over to auto and use your front wheel and you go to number two. So there's a sneaky menu in there. Keep warm lighting colors. And in my opinion, it's weirdly perfect. Even if you're underexposed by two stops, try to fix it. Didn't fix it. Almost there. And I was being very cautious with my ISO today, uh, not because of the Nikon camera, but because of the weirdness, the, the Lightroom, whatever Adobe did, the high ISO performance of this camera in Adobe Lightroom is not good. So it's not the camera, because if you load it into Capture NX or whatever the Nikon software is called, it's fine. But the Adobe profile they built for this sucks. So I'm trying to keep my ISO under 2000. Otherwise things that do get grainy, maybe it's a, they want you to try out their new AI uh, noise reduction. Maybe that's what the thing is. They, they ruin the profile for that. Anyways, I was conscious to keep my ISO down over the day and uh, I didn't have any issues, even though it is a terrible profile that Adobe's built. So hopefully that gets updated this week or next week and life is good again. Here we go into the low light dancing and face and eye detect is picking up just fine in dancing lights. So this is on 3d tracking as well. So if you want to just kind of lock onto one person, it's nice. I like that this just looks like it's from a party in the 1920s. 
I'll take it. Shout out to Tim for his Telepro Reflex Light, making this look like that, because I dig it. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in my shot list, email templates, and everything else, head on over to the link in the description. Also, if you are interested in your wedding photographer and you don't have a website that you're super happy with, the new Focal AI Creator has just launched and what it will do is it will build you a beautiful website using AI, it'll write your about me and all the stuff that we find pretty difficult. And not only that, it comes with a backend system as well to do all your booking. So it's a full booking system. I'll stop talking about it because the music ended, but go check that out if you're interested. You could literally build a website in one minute and it's a pretty incredible thing for uh, us as photographers and something I definitely wish that I had when I was first getting started. So go check that out, the Focal AI Creator Plan. And if you don't want to do that, there's some stuff on the screen. You can go watch some more full wedding days if you want. I just knocked over my Hello Kitty toy that I got in New York this week. See you next time.